Did you guys ever play with like erector sets when you were a kid? This is kind of like a giant erector set. Um, you ever heard the saying also that like boys don't ever stop playing with toys. Their toys just get more expensive. This kind of fits in that bracket. So this is a custom cage bird cage that I've been putting off for so long to build. Uh, but the time has come because I need to get ready to go out of town. Uh, and unfortunately, Susie's going to probably stay in her cage. Why? I am gone. There's nothing wrong with it, but um, I did do uh, pictures on all of the walls, uh, both left and right and the back. So right now I'm putting that together with the only bracket that is actually made for the joining of the back wall, which is kind of like an H shape. Um, all the framing of these amazing cages are uh, powder coated aluminum, so they will never rust, which is honestly amazing because most bird cages do eventually rust out so getting this together uh, before going ahead and laying out the surrounding framing of this which is all like an L shape and then there's a square in the bottom uh, now this is for the hardware the three pieces of hardware for the framing is this piece here these are the corner pieces that connect everything you're gonna need a bolt and on that bolt, there is a actual Allen key that tightens it all together. And they do send you this tool. Uh, I'll show you guys here in a little bit. And the nut, which is this yellow piece here, it's not really a nut, but uh, this is what tightens everything together. Um, so what I like to do is start to screw everything um, or most of the yellow pieces onto the bolts, except for the exception of four, I'm sorry, eight that you will end up using later. Um, but yeah, let's get cracking and get this thing together. So this is kind of how the bolts sit in the corner brackets. So you kind of get an idea and then they'll simply get pushed on the rails. I want to make this very clear because I did mess up here and yeah, I know I said I've built quite a few of them, but this piece right here that you like see everything inside. So if you're working on the bottom of the cage, that's facing down. And if you're working on the top of the cage, this piece will be facing up so you can access it. Um, as you can see, the cage is a little bit built behind me. I did have to go back and film this because I did, again, mess up. Um, but yeah, make sure this is facing down if it's the bottom and up if it's the top when you're installing. So all of the um, outside pieces of metal, you can see that they're kind of like an L shape with two open ends and a square uh, back piece. That's where the little yellow tab or bracket whatever you want to call it is going to go in i don't know the names of them i'm very sorry um, as you can see they kind of just slide in um, and that right there is kind of how you want it to sit when you're done now you do have to get the background in um, but you're going to go around doing this to all four corners and then the background piece goes into the part that's obviously facing it uh, now Again, I start with the background and work my way up to the doors, so it's just easier for me that way to do it. You might find it easier to do another way, but I highly doubt it because I usually like to do things the easiest way. So once you get one corner done, you're going to go ahead and do the same thing to all of the four corners and get the background in the brackets and then move forward after that. Now I filmed the whole thing showing the different um, brackets or outside areas, the L shaped. The one in the middle of the pictures um, is an H shape. It's the only one like that in the entire package. So you really can't mess that up. Uh, there is pictures of it in the instructions, but the instructions to me are just not all that great. That's why again, I wanted to do this video, um, but I did, I thought I recorded it, but apparently I didn't. So, for the tools that you're going to need for the corner um, framing rails is basically this allen key which they send with you they send it or to you because it's nice and long or a t25 bit for a drill if you're going to use a drill now i do not recommend you use a drill and i can't get the camera to focus on the drill so you can see it but it's called a t25 bit it's long i've have this one slightly modified so fit in there better um, I actually grinded down around the edges there, um, but I do not suggest you use this because you will strip um, the Allen key spot on the bolt itself. 
if you go too much. So I would just use the Allen key they send with the cage so you don't have the problem of stripping the bolt. So if you guys haven't realized either, I absolutely hate doing voiceovers because I have to sit here and listen to my voice over and over again. So sorry for that. <laughs> Now that you got the corners all nice and tight, you're going to start installing the tabs that are going to be facing up for the left and right side of the cage. So again, remember this is the back of the cage that has the picture on it, um, and then which the pictures, by the way, are customizable. I chose like a foggy forest. I thought it would look cool with the parrot. But anyway, uh, so yeah, once you get those bad boys installed, you're going to take these shorter brackets. Um, again, they are the L-shaped, and you're going to just, well, slide them on. You're going to want it facing the opposite side. Get them nice and snug on there, and then you can go back and tighten them. Now you can pick this up to let it flex a little bit to tighten the ones underneath. It's not going to hurt it at all, I promise you. Um, there's a couple different ways you can lay down and look at it. If you need to look you know, where you're tightening or if you don't, you can just simply uh, you know, put your foot underneath it, put the Allen key in there and do it that way. So if you've made it this far, thank you guys, I appreciate it. Uh, coming along to the side now, it's really simple. They kind of just slide in. That's that's basically it. So everything else at this point is kind of just sliding in, tightening down, and that's basically it. So we've got the left side in. You can see the two holes. That's for the food bowls. Now coming along to the top and the bottom. So you see this piece here. It's going to have the same trim as the two side pieces you just put in. That is for the top. And the bottom one you can see is slightly different. It has like a harder plastic trim on it uh, that doesn't really move. That's because this is a slide out tray uh, for cleaning purposes. So you can see the difference in the two there. Again, one on your left is going to be for the top, which we are going to install now. Alright guys, it is that time of year again. I will be in Dallas for Aquashella this coming weekend, which is May 20th and 21st. Dallas, Texas, so excited, can't wait. Make sure you guys come to Aquashella if you guys are in the Dallas area. Come say what's up to me, come say what's up to all the other creators. I will be bouncing back and forth between the creator booth at Aquashella and also the Vision Custom Aquariums, Custom Cage booth. I'll be kind of bouncing back and forth between there, but we will have some reptiles uh, on display at the Vision booth as well. So make sure you guys come say hi to me, come say hi to all the other creators that are gonna be there. It's gonna be so much fun, it always is. I absolutely love Dallas. The one thing I don't like is the heat. It is hot here, but you know what? It's hot and dry there. I love the humidity. So again, Aquashella this weekend, guys. So pumped. Make sure you guys get your tickets now. I will put the website in the description so you can buy your tickets and come say what's up. Okay, so now we're going to start working on the front of the cage, which is basically where the doors are going to be. And we're working on it front there or the part of the cage that faces out. Um, down now the reason why I'm using the cardboard box is so that it doesn't scratch it up because doing it on the concrete would obviously scratch the aluminum frame that this is that is powder coated black uh, don't want it scratched up do a cardboard box or a big towel or whatever the case may be to keep it nice and clean looking now for the doors um, they come the way that they should be set in the tracks for the framing um, now wrapped around it is a piece of plastic as you can see here it says outside door 
so you know that the one that's on the bottom of the two I have is the one that had the sticker outside door and then the one that you guys see on top there is the one that says inside door should be facing inside into the cage um, so that's how I have it laying down now so you guys kind of get a rough idea of that now uh, I've had many problems in the past where you're building this and the doors fall out which I will show you an easy way I fix it but you got to put the frame together just like you did pretty much everything else again using those corner brackets um, and making sure that the part of the corner bracket that is open is again on the top of the cage facing up and on the bottom facing down. Okay, so I told you guys I have a little trick that I use. As you can see, I got some zip ties in my mouth here. Um, so I actually end up zip tying the doors to the frame. Now, this is going to come in handy later when we go to pick up the frame and put it on the bottom of the cage. Um, the doors are kind of flimsy because it is just essentially wire and I have had them fall out of the framing many, many times. So putting a zip tie on them will keep them in place on the frame. Uh, this is the top of the doors and we are gonna go ahead and do the bottoms as well and then slam it all together. Now putting the door frame on the back of the cage here, you're just kind of going around and trying to get it all lined up. It might take a few laps around the cage, but as you can see, there's a slight bow in the doors there. You also want to make sure that they are evenly spaced on both sides. If not, it will cause the frame that you just put on the door frame to be a little bit out of alignment. But once you get it all aligned, then you can go back, add in your bolts and your plastic tabs and then get them all in and get them tightened down. Now when it comes to the top of the cage or the door frame, um, you're gonna have to remove those zip ties because you can see here it's kind of stopping the framing from sitting on the wire correctly and add new zip ties going through the other wiring. You wanna keep the zip ties on the door until you get the cage stood up on its feet because again they will fall out trust me i know from experience but going ahead and slamming these out and getting new ones in only takes about two seconds Now on the top of the cage, there's a couple different brackets. You'll see like this that have a nice smooth top. So you're gonna slide those in to cover up all that hardware. You take a little screw that comes with it, of course, and just screw it in. Uh, you're gonna do this on all four corners. So now on the bottom of the cage, you have the other covers that have like a leg on them. Um, you could, one, leave it like this if you don't want the cage to move around, but it does come with casters, also known as wheels, uh, so you can roll it around if you want. I'm going to be putting the wheels on because this will be staying in my garage, and I will have to move it around occasionally. So going ahead and getting all four of these screwed into place before popping on the wheels.
So once you get those all on, then it's time for the uh, pull-out tray shelves, I guess you could say. Uh, so this clicks into the frame itself. Now, you want to do this dead last right before you stand the cage up because it is extremely hard to get out if you put it in before doing anything else. So you have to do this after you put the little um, end caps on the bottom there. It literally takes your whole body weight to push it into the track, but you have one on the back and then one on each side as well. Of course, as I'm editing, I realize this one wasn't in focus, but uh, just putting the casters on, literally, you push them in and they lock into place. So all you gotta do is shove them in pretty hard um, and there's a little pin that pops out once they're in place and you don't have to worry about them falling out. Okay, so now that you got all that in, it's time to slide in the last piece on the bottom. So this is what's going to keep the bird separate from the newspaper or tray paper, whatever you end up using. And you can see the tracks there. They very easily just kind of slide in. So you can slide them out for cleaning later because we all know birds love to poop. And their poop does get pretty stuck on if you don't clean it so often. So um, very easily slides in, slides out. And with that, the cage is ready to finally be stood up. All right, now that it's stood up, we can remove the zip ties, get those off. And now you can see the doors can slide around freely. They slide relatively easy. Um, I mean, there's no real drag or anything like that, um, but they do close a certain way because there is a lock that we actually do install on it. Um, I'm not necessarily using the lock on this bird cage but some people like to so they install it so next are the feeders those funny looking squares randomly in the side here uh, so one is for food one is for water um, now when you get these cages again they're completely customizable you could get two water bowls if you wanted or two feeders or you can get up to i think six slots in each cage uh depending on the size so pretty cool i actually i i absolutely love their style of feeders uh the trays are super easily removed um, which you guys will see here in a little bit but installing them is pretty much self-explanatory Now for this next step, I'm actually gonna be removing um, the bottom layers here just because it's gonna make it a lot easier for me. Um, you know, so again, everybody's different, uh, but I'm actually gonna be getting in the cage for this next step, which is only for my cage because I did it the way I did. Now, because I went with pictures on all of the sides of this cage, I do need to, you know, drill the holes for the perches, um, and everything else basically I want here unless it's gonna hang from the top of the cage so because of that reason is why I took out the bottom trays now I went with this style because the bird that's in here is gonna be a little old and she tends to have projectile um, feces so that's why I went with this particular style and because this cage is gonna be in my garage, I didn't want other things in my garage covered. So again, just pre-drilling these holes out. Uh, these two perches are for the feeders um, so they can, or so she basically can pretty much get food and water uh, easily.
even though I'm not going to use it, I figured I'd show you guys the locking mechanism. It's three pieces. One piece that slides in through the pre-drilled hole in the back there. Um, and then you have the bracket that the lock actually goes on. And, and then another little uh, Phillips head screw that goes in the front that's a, got a flat head. Um, you are going to need two Phillips head screwdrivers to do this because they're both Phillips head. So one on the front there. Um, I'm using my finger to hold the one on the back currently, but the other one, um, once it starts to get tight, you're going to have to put the other Phillips head screwdriver in the back. The teeth do go facing down on this lock. I know that's very different. Most people are used to these types of blocks with the teeth being up, but this one is down. Again, I'm not going to do this. I'm literally doing it just to show you guys. Well, there she is, all done and pretty like. So, all in all, this cage is about six feet tall. It is four feet across, and it is, I believe, 20 inches deep. I could be wrong. I'm sure somebody from the cage company will comment on it and fix it if I am wrong. But that's it, pretty simple. Um, all in all, it took me about two hours to put it together. Uh, the first time I had done one, it took me about six hours to put it together because I didn't know what I was doing. Um, but hopefully if you guys are watching this video because you're building one of these cages, hopefully this video helped you out. Um, again, definitely want to put something better out there than what has been. So there are plenty of videos of this amazing birdcage getting built on YouTube. But they all kind of suck. So I kind of want to do my own to make it a little simpler for everybody because the first time I ever had to build one of these cages I watched a couple different videos but I had to watch a couple different videos to kind of figure it all out. Um, this is the first of probably other bird cages I will be getting from Custom Cages. Um, originally, Susie was in this cage. Corey, you want to say hi? Hi. Hi. You can wave. And, and I built it too. Yes, you helped Daddy. Of course you did. She helps me literally with everything nowadays. Um, so yeah, so Susie was in this cage, which this cage is great. This is like your old school normal bird cage, um, but it's just they don't last they don't last very long they get rusted really easy the birds chew the paint off uh the poop gets super stuck on there because there's like uh what is it called it's like paint that's textured textured paint whatever uh, but like this thing so the reason why we went with pictures on all three sides is because well just like any geriatric human or animal their bowel movements are kind of just sporadically sprayed I guess is the best way I can put that um, so I decided to do this that's why actually there's you can't see it because now because there's a white belt thing on it but there's actually a board on the back of that that's white uh, to stop her projectile feces um, but yeah I absolutely love this the way it came out um, you know again I had to pre-drill the holes for the perches because I did the picture on all three sides and I mean, changing the food and water on these things are a breeze. I mean, look at this. It's literally just, well, there's water in that one. So you just whoop, turn that and then it just slides right out. Like, oh, it's not even focused. Why isn't it focused? Okay, so, so it just slides out. It's super simple. There's a little plastic tab here. You push that down so it can't slide out. But I mean, hey, it's protected this way. It's absolutely wonderful you can't beat it now this did also come with some rocks that i could have put up there like decor rocks for her to climb on and stuff like that but i wanted to do this stuff first without the rocks see how she does um you know she, the fact that she is an old bird didn't want to put too too much in there she's not even a big fan of toys um she constantly has toys but i never see her play with them so Hoping she'll sit on the swing, maybe play with the rope a little bit, use this to climb up and down. But yeah, I absolutely love this thing. Now, I know you're probably wondering, hey, 
why didn't you get another bird cage for Rio? Because Rio is actually be going in a sun catcher cage out on display here at the zoo. Susie will not be on display. Uh, she's just old and she's been through a lot, so I don't want to have to do that to her. So, what? I'm scared because it's a lizard in the garage. A lizard? And this one. Oh, it's a gecko. It's a house gecko. Just a gecko. Geckos are cool. They eat all the moss and nighttime bugs. But anyway, um, yeah, just wanted to throw this out there, show you guys. I absolutely love this cage. Uh, couldn't be happier. This, you know, is, again, my, like, tenth or so time building one of these cages, so it's a little easier for me than most people, and I completely understand that. Um, but I wanted to show this to you guys and, and mm -hmm. envy in the awesomeness that is this new cage for Susie. <laughs> Alright, so let's go on this journey together. Let's go get Susie. Let's put her in the new cage. She's probably going to freak out a little bit because, again, it is a new home for her. Um, you know, it's going to be interesting, but we're going to see how she does. She's already ready to go up. That's her little happy dance because she knows I'm coming to get her. Yeah, right, Susie. Come on, step up, baby. Good girl. Kiss her. Let me kiss her. Mm, hey. She denied my affection. There you go. Coral loves when I kiss her for some reason. Isn't that right? Isn't that right? Rio's like, what the heck, man? So, um, yeah. As you can see, she's still, she's actually growing feathers in again, which is wonderful. I absolutely love that she's starting to grow feathers in. She's not plucking anymore, which, you know, she hasn't plucked since she's been with us, so I guess that's that's a plus, right? All right, let's see how she does here, guys. Look, Susie, that's your new cage, baby. Oh, step up for me. She's thinking about it. Step up. Uh-oh. I don't think she wants to go in. Susie, step up. She's like, what the heck? Here, baby. Can you step up? Good girl. So we're going to go ahead and... Close it up on her there. Look at that! You got a nice big new cage! Yeah. How awesome! So, pretty cool. Oh, what's she trying to do? See who she's trying to be Already trying to look for things to chew on. You can chew on that. Oh, it's too much like chill. On a wall. <laughs> <laughs> so now, because I'm going out of town also... Um, and I'm going to be so sad and I need to sleep with my mommy. Because I'll be out of town, um, she will not allow anybody else to take her out, unfortunately. Um, it's just a me thing. So she'll be staying in here while I am out of town. Um, but... You know, got it done just in time for her to, you know, be comfortable in this thing. So, oh, there she goes. Who's your pretty girl? It's a pretty girl. You're it's so a silly. Girl. So silly. But anyway, so that's going to be it for this video, guys. Hopefully, you enjoyed a quick little fun uh, build video. I absolutely love this custom cage. Um, I mean, you, you can't beat it, you can't beat their products. And, I, and, you know, to be honest with you guys, I turn down sponsors constantly because I don't like their products. I mean, it's just the truth. So, it is what it is. But I'll see you guys later. Hopefully, if you are in the Dallas area, we will see you guys there. I will see you guys there. The kiddos won't be there. You know what I just realized? You guys haven't even seen Wilder yet here on YouTube. Later you will. <laughs> later they will? Yeah. When I come back from Texas? Yep. Can you say Texas? Texas. No, not text us. Texas. <laughs> I said that. Oh. Silly goose. <laughs> Bye, guys.